another tutorial for you guys today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how to configure a BGP peering using the loopback interfaces on the routers so we have routers 1 2 and 3 and we're going to configure BGP between them using their loopbacks now this does imply that you have to have some type of IGP going on between the routers and you have to advertise the loopbacks into that IGP that way the routers know about each other's loopbacks and they can communicate with each other using their loopback so between routers 1 2 and 3 I'm also running EIGRP and we can verify that so if we come over to router 3 let's do a show IP route EIGRP I can see that I'm learning router 1's loopback and router 2's loopback through EIGRP we do the same thing on router 1 I can see I'm learning router 2's loopback and router 3's loopback. And on router 2, we do a show IP route EIGRP. I'm learning about router 1's loopback as well as router 3's loopback. So that means that from router 3, I should be able to ping router 1's loopback if I source the ping from my own loopback. And we see that the ping was successful. So let's start on router 3. Let's go into global configuration mode and let's first go under the BGP process and let's now configure our neighbor statement. So neighbor 1.1.1.1 is an autonomous system 123. And let's also say neighbor 2.2.2.2 is also in autonomous system 123. Now there's one other command that you have to put but I want to explain why it's important because it's not only important for BGP it's important for any application that you're trying to configure on your router so what I want to do is I want to do a packet capture on this link right here so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do start capture I'm gonna click OK now Wireshark should start automatically if it doesn't I'll start it myself but we see that it started so I want to do a filter let me just close this and I only want to see TCP traffic and this is what I want to show you so we're trying to form the peering using loopback interfaces so right now we see that 3 because this is the IP address of 3 is sending a TCP send request over to router 1's loopback router 1 is of course responding with a reset because we haven't configured router 1 yet but even when we configure router 1 we're still going to have a problem and the problem is router 3 is sending the send request with the IP address of his physical link not the IP address of his loopback the reason why that's a problem is because when we configure router 1 his neighbor statement is going to be for router 3's loopback so when he sees the send request coming from the physical IP of 3 he's going to reject them because this is not the IP address one has configured as a neighbor one needs to see the send request coming from 3's loopback not the physical link and this is going to be with any application we can test this let's just do ICMP real quick so I can kind of show you what I mean so if I come over to router 3 and I ping router 1's loopback and I don't specify a source like how I did here I'm just going to hit enter we see the ping works but if I come over to Wireshark and I think I got to restart the capture so let me just reopen it I think I stopped it so let me do right click and let me start Wireshark because if I don't specify the source I want you to see what source router 3 uses all right so let me do my ping again let's come back to Wireshark so you see the source IP address router 3 is sending he's using the source IP address of his physical link so you ping in router 1's loopback you would think that router 3 has connectivity to router 1's loopback but you want connectivity to be between the loopbacks not the physical address so this is why when I did a ping to router 1's loopback I did source loopback 0 because when router 1 gets the pings I need him to see the ping coming from my loopback not the physical address 
So that's why it says now packet sent with the source of 3.3.3.3. And we can see that's the IP address router 3 used when he sent those requests. So this is with any application. If you don't tell the router what IP address to use, he will use the IP address of the outgoing link. And if that's not the IP address, the application on the other end is expecting, the application will fail. So even if we come over and we configure router one, so let's configure router one. Let's say router BGP 123. Let's do a neighbor statement, neighbor 3.3.3.3 is an autonomous system 123. So we now have router one configured. But if we keep doing show IP BGP summary, it's always going to show a state of idle. And that's because we have not told the routers what IP address to use as the source. So you can see even router one, this is the packet coming from router one going to three. He's using the IP address of his physical link and router three is rejecting it because this is not who router three has configured as a neighbor. So the other command that we need to do, we're gonna come over to router three. We're gonna go under the BGP process. We're going to say neighbor, the IP address of router one's loopback. The update source is my own loopback zero. Now you only need to do this on one side for the pairing to work. But basically what this is doing is telling router three, when you're trying to send the messages to router one, use the loopback as the source and not the IP address of the physical link. So once I do this, we should see that the neighbor comes up. And if we come back over, we're still filtering on TCP. We should see where router three is gonna start sending TCP messages with his loopback and router one no longer rejects it. Now he's acknowledging it and now TCP has completed. And if we come back over, the peer is now up. So this command right here is very important. When you're not only doing BGP with any application, you have to tell the router what IP address to use as the source to make sure he uses the right one. So if I do a show IP BGP summary, I can see that the peering over to router one is now up. Okay, and the peering over to router two is down because I haven't configured router two yet. So let's come on over to router two. Let's go under the BGP process. Let's say neighbor, the IP address of router one. He's in autonomous system 123. And then the IP address of router three. They're also in autonomous system 123. And now we have to do the update source command. And you only got to do this on one side. So we're going to do this for router three. And we're going to do this for router one. Okay, so you see the neighbor adjacency, the three came up. Then if we come over to router one, because we haven't configured router two yet as a peer. So let's do that. Neighbor, the IP address of router two's loopback. They're in autonomous system 123. And we should see that the neighbor adjacency comes up in a second. There we go. So we do a show IP BGP summary. We can see the neighbor adjacency to router two is up and the neighbor adjacency to router three. Okay, we do a show IP BGP summary on router three. We can see the adjacencies, the one and two are both up. And if we come over to two, do a show IP BGP summary, we see the neighbor adjacency to one and three is up. All right, so to show you the final configuration, let's do a show run section router BGP. So we enabled the BGP process. We put our neighbor statement to tell the neighbor or tell the router what autonomous system the neighbor belongs to. But we also did the update source command, telling the router what IP address to use as the source when it's communicating with the neighbor and remember you only got to do this on one side in order to establish the pairing but you got to do it that way the routers aren't sending these messages with the wrong IP as the source so you put your neighbor statement and then you say update source loopback zero 
And this is how you configure two routers to become BGP neighbors using their loopbacks.